Mix Up with Mike plugin of the week comes from Schwab Digital. It is the Gold Clip. This is a plugin that is designed to emulate two high end mastering converters uh, and the process of clipping. Um, quite a lot of records are actually made by or mastered where the uh, audio signal is passed through the A to D, clipping the A to D as part of the sound. And there's a lot that goes into just clipping, not just the sort of hard clipping. And this is meant to emulate at least two of those devices. One, I suppose, is probably the Lavery Gold. The other, I'm not certain about. I haven't investigated into it that deep. Obviously, there are issues with mentioning that uh, from the manufacturer's perspective, if it's a specific thing. But whatever the case, uh, it's actually quite a cool uh, unit. It has a lot of uh, creative and unique tools. So let's kind of dive into it a little bit. Um, on the basis, on the basics of it here, just uh, from it, we have a bypass control here. We have all the, you know, you could do uh, presets and the AV and all of that sort of stuff here. Uh, there is a link for the input and output gain, right? So as you raise one, it will lower the other. Um, nice way to kind of balance things out. I'm setting my ceiling here to minus six. Generally, it would be at zero or at uh, whatever you want your final output to be at. I'm setting it here just uh, for the video recording. So don't make too much of it from there, but I'll drive audio in for the clipping. Uh, the measurement of the clipping is a really cool feature here. It will show the maximum clip, so it'll show you what the number is, and it will tell you at what time it is as well, which is actually quite nice because uh, then it's just like, oh, where's the maximum clip? But then you can actually look at a time code number that shows you exactly where it is. Very cool. Uh, there are other a couple of uh, unique features here. Um, there's a wet-dry control. There are some limiters with wet-dry controls. Um, but you have the ability to blend the two, link them, or mix them in separately. This can also be used as a creative tool um, on just other audio tracks like basses, drums, etc. And, um, and I'll show you why when you start to get into uh, the gold processing, which is a way of bringing loudness in, which I'll explain in a little bit. Uh, so we have that. We have the output level. You'll see your actual peaks, all of that sort of stuff. Some unique features. So there is a, a thing here they call box tone. This is like a high-frequency roll-off. Uh, you could either leave it flat, uh, and there are two versions of it. There's a classic version, which I guess is the roll-off feature from the older converter unit, and this is the more modern one, which if I zoom in a little bit, it looks like that has like a little bit of a ripple, so there's some resonance going on in there uh, where this one is fairly smooth on the top end, and that can help to kind of smooth out the top end, sometimes cut back a little bit of the digital edge. There are three versions of the clipper. There's a hard clip, there is a classic clip, again, that's the older unit, and the modern clip, so that would be the modern unit. So each one has a different kind of characteristic, obviously the harder one being the hardest, classic being the softest, and this sort of the modern being a little bit of the uh, medium version. There is also um, a gold feature, which has two options here. Now what this does is, this is raising low uh, level energy up. Now, what happens is when you push low-level energy up, you're also pushing everything up above it. So the way that this works is somewhat like the way a tape machine works, whereas your driving signal into the tape, it will become increasingly more resistant, and in that sense, providing more compression the more level you push into the tape. So the lower the level, the less compression. The more you push into it, the more compression. Sort of like a variable ratio. So as you push into it, the ratio continues to progressively get higher. So the question is, uh, what is the uh, transfer function, right? In other words, what is the curve? And there are five, primarily there are two of them here. There is the modern one. So if you look, if you zoom in on this, it'll actually give you exactly what you're looking at. So this would be a linear gain structure. And this is what happens when you add gain. So there's a separate gain knob here. So as you add gain in, as the signal level pushes up towards the top is where it starts to compress. In the modern version, you could see uh, what they call a classic. 
so what happens here is that compression is soft or it's harder, right? But happens over a longer section of the audio. So this is just a way to bring in um, uh, basically like a saturation, but unlike tape, like a similar type of thing to tape, but it's doing it on a sample by sample level. So there is no um, attack release characteristics and there's no distortion from that end. Now, as you drive into it, you'll get distortion in the overall audio signal, which I will demonstrate and, and we'll get to that in a bit. Um, we also, so this is your drive feature. So in the modern version, it goes up two and a half dB. You could raise it up to six dB in the classic version. So uh, the classic version is much more aggressive and you'll get some distortion. And that's probably a feature you would use if you wanted to say saturate an 808 or something along those lines. Now there's another unique feature here called alchemy. Um, and what this does is it actually employs an equalization during the point of clipping. So what's happening is it's cutting upper mid and high frequencies at the point that the clipping occurs. Now, as I understand it, I believe what happens is it applies that EQ, the clipping is then applied, which creates less artifact because you're actually smoothing out what it clips, and, and then you have the full frequency response after that. So it's only this instantaneous sort of thing during the point at which the clipping actually happens. It's a very subtle effect. Sometimes um, cranking it up, it's like, okay, yeah, this is obvious. And sometimes it's like, hear no difference. Translated over all of this through to YouTube, who knows? <laughs> you let me know whether you hear anything. All right, so let's load up a, a basic track and kind of go through the mechanics of it. So for this, I basically have the input output uh, linked here, have my ceiling set to minus six. Again, that's just for the video recording. Otherwise you would probably have it at zero or minus one or wherever, minus 0.2, wherever you set your final, uh, output level. Um, and uh, there is a wet dry control, which we could play with a little bit later, but let's just start with this basically flat, turn the gold off, turn this off, and let's just sort of, uh, find a clipping, uh, setting, a clipper setting. The way you look I didn't notice till then Who oh, you fooling Cause I don't believe your lies no more When you're talking I just know you're counting Who oh, you fooling Cause I don't believe your lies no more You're trying, you lost me Thinking that you could leave me Those are not the lies that you tell Right, so that's a fair amount of clipping there, uh, almost 4 dB. Uh, that's a hard clipper. So let's kind of go through the different options here with the classic and the modern. The way you look in, I didn't notice till then. Who oh, you fooling? Cause I don't believe your lies no more when you're talking. I just know you're clowning. Who oh, you fooling? Cause I don't believe your lies no more. Right, so this is just basically the knee of the uh, of the clipping. I think probably particularly in the chorus section, they prefer the hard clip. Um, although you do have like a like a slightly softer quality that you get from the verse. I wouldn't. I'm not sure I would automate it, but maybe <laughs> of the two, that would be my choice there, just straight up. Uh, let's see. Where do we go from here? Now there's the alchemy thing here. So what this does again is this applies the EQ to to that curve uh, when the clipping is happening, right? The way you look in, I didn't notice till then. Who oh, you fooling? Cause I don't believe your lies no more when you're talking. I just know you're clowning. Who oh, you fooling? Cause I don't believe your lies no more.
So what it what it feels like to me is that this actually kind of softens the hard clip. Um, and I've kind of like somewhere in the middle with it. So I'm just going to kind of run it right down the middle. Um, and it maybe gets rid of a little bit of that edge in the verse that I was talking about that I was hearing. Um, so maybe I can soften that a little bit, kind of leave that there. Now, the next thing is the loudness. Um, and that's where the gold feature comes in. Now, there's there's a feature here called Unity which as we raise this up will keep the gain the same um, so you can actually hear what it's doing but what what will end up happening is as i raise this up it will feel like the vocal level or the louder level things are coming lower <laughs> so that's that's like a little bit of the off-putting or the the part that doesn't quite totally work for me uh but just notice that so i'll just leave that in let's start with the modern setting the way you So you could see the saturation like right in there where that compression occurs uh, because it's pushing into the curve, which is mostly towards the top end, right? So you could hear what it's doing. So I set the unity to hear what it's doing. If that's off, this is what it sounds like. The way you look in, I didn't know. So obviously as it goes louder, it always sounds better. That's so that's part of like kind of keeping you in check there. And I think it gives you a good idea, particularly to, to measure the distortion. This becomes particularly true to the classic, which has a longer transfer uh, gain function there. So as we go through now with the unity here, now you're going to start to hear some more heavy saturation. The way you look in, I didn't know. So if we were going to take like an AB kind of thing here and say if we took this and we added like a 2dB and compared it up against this at 2dB, let's see what we got. The way you look in, I didn't notice till then. Who you fooling? Cause I don't believe you lies no more when you're talking. I just know. even have to wait till the chorus section so i could hear that this is like sharper and cleaner whereas the other one brings in you know uh more grit and warmth so by the time we get to the chorus section with the bass the full bass is going to be a mess um loads to work with here and you could also hear that that uh other uh the classic function there becomes um, can be a valuable tool as you, if you start to saturate individual tracks. And it's, it leans a little bit more for that direction. The one other feature here is, and uh, this one is just about creating a smoothness and openness on the top end. Often when you have things like low pass filters and high pass filters, um, you have to listen, particularly with the high pass filters for resonances that ripple up through the frequency spectrum because it can cause phase issues that ripple upward. Um, and 
you know, so you have to be very conscious of that. There's a similar thing, although that happens from the top down. Um, what you really want to listen for with this type of thing is how does it focus the clarity of the uh, upper mids in particular through the high frequency range as opposed to listening just for how it affects the air? Because if it brings clarity into the frequencies that are going to be represented on people's stereo systems, then that would be the way that you would want to go there. Uh, so let's just check out the uh, box tone setting. The way you look in, I didn't notice till then. Who you fooling? Cause I don't believe your lies no more when you're talking. I just know you're clowning. Who you fooling? Cause I don't believe your lies no more. So like to me this this one here the classic one seems to just kind of smooth off a bit of the edge particularly on the vocal um, way up on on the top end and while it does sort of mask a little bit of the air that's up there you know maybe you get that from someplace else earlier in the chain it's a nice option to have um a very cool one um there's also uh i'm trying to think is there something else that i missed here no i think i pretty much got everything um you can also listen to the delta i think that was the other thing so you could hear what it is that you're taking away uh with what the process is working on there's also the wet dry control again you can work with it on individual tracks and all of that um very cool plugin uh this was just recommended to me recently checked it out and uh at first wasn't so sure but then as i started to dial in and play around with it a little bit i see it as a pretty amazing tool particularly this gold feature and the alchemy feature both of those are very appealing so uh check it out uh schwab digital gold clip uh it is mixing with mike plugin of the week <laughs> 